Hi, it's Chester Tuckwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to use the future value function. And the context of this is we want to find out what the future value of our retirement fund will be. So this will be based on uh, an assumed interest rate over the period of investment, a constant interest rate, and on also on constant payments into our retirement fund. So we've got some literature from our retirement fund and it tells us that it assumes inflation will be 2.5%. And it assumes also that above inflation is going to achieve 2.34%. So that gives me an assumed growth of 4.84. Obviously, we want to see what our retirement will, fund will be worth uh, in the future bearing in mind and considering inflation. So we're going to base our rate on this figure here, not the total assumed growth. Now, we've got our rate there, but we do need to work out what the rate is per month because we will be making monthly payments into our retirement. So we just divide that by 12 to get our monthly interest rate. The number of periods that's the number of months between now and our retirement date. And I'm going to use date diff to calculate that. So date diff requires a start date. Now I'm going to hard code in today's date for that. So today's date being the 3rd of September 2019. And then the end date is the date of my retirement. And I want to return the number of months. 259 months. Now the payment you have to enter as a negative value. That's the monthly payment you're going to make into your retirement fund. And for this one, we're going to say uh, 650. So make sure you put that in as a negative value. Now the present value, uh, you don't have to specify this, but if you have a lump sum that you're putting in to your retirement, that would be the present value. It could be zero, you may be starting from scratch, or you may have an investment that you're putting straight into your retirement, or you already have an amount within your retirement fund. So let's say for argument's sake, we put in, we've got 35,000 in uh, to put it straight into our retirement fund. So now we have all the information we need to work out the future value. So I'm gonna use a function called FV, future value. And the first argument is the rate argument, which is our rate per period. The second argument is N per number of payment periods, 259, we've calculated up there. The next argument payment, that's the payment you're gonna make per month, comma. Present value, you can see the square brackets around it, that name, it means it's non-mandatory. We do have a starting point there investment of 35,000. Type is also non-mandatory. Uh, it defaults to zero end of period. Uh, that's basically specifying when you're making the 650 pound payment. Is it at the beginning of the month or the end of the month? So if we say end of the month, zero, that is in fact the default. So we don't need to specify if we're gonna use the default. And there we are, there is the future value of our fund based on these assumptions. Obviously, with a retirement fund, <laughs> that's never going to be the exact amount because our growth will be based on stocks and shares and uh, inflation will change over time. Uh, but it gives you a good idea of the future value of an investment. It may not be a retirement fund, it may be regular pay payments into a saving account. And you could use the same kind of information for that calculation as well. Now, what I want to do here is to track the performance of my investment. So I've listed all the quarter ends. I get quarter end uh, reports from the retirement fund to tell me how much my retirement is worth. And I just want to track the performance against the specified growth expectations that they've given me. So here are all the quarter ends and here are the number of months between now and that quarter end. So future value will do this calculation for me. So the rate is over here, rate per period. I need to fix that because I'm copying the formula down. 
n per the number of payments, well, that will be this value here, which won't be fixed because I need to refer to these values as I copy down. Payment is the payments I'm gonna make each period. I need to fix that as well. Comma present value is the current investment. F4 for that as well to fix it. And I'm gonna make payments at the end of the month, so I don't need to use that last argument. Press enter and it tells me at the uh, end of the first quarter, uh, three months on, my investment should be worth uh, this figure here. Copy it down and I get figures for the other quarter ends. Okay, so that may also be a useful way of tracking your investment. Okay, thanks very much for listening. It's been Chester Tugwell at Blue Pecan Computer Training.